Alright, welcome back everybody. I am that one nice guy and I'm gonna be showcasing Super Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo. Uh what you just saw was Castlevania Rondo Blood, the Maria only category for the PC engine or turbo graphics, however you should call it. And now comes Castlevania 4, which is probably my favorite one in the entire series. So again wanna thank everybody for being here and allow me to be here as well. Alright, so Super Castlevania 4 is starting in 3, 2, 1, go. <laughs> JCVania. Yeah, I don't know how that guy was able to learn this game that quickly. Thanks for the good luck, appreciate it a lot. So Super Castlevania 4 uh, is pretty much a remake of Castlevania 1 for the NES. Uh, the story is pretty much the same. You play Simon, you go in, you kick some butt, kill some monsters, and... Uh, basically kill Dracula and then let the castle crumble so again it's pretty much just a remake of the first game um, except the levels aren't really exactly the same however one of the biggest differences is the gameplay so in this game right here you can actually uh, use your whip in all in a multitude of other directions unlike the first game So throughout this game, I'm also going to be using this cross for the entire time. Um, you do not want to lose this cross at all. Because as you can see right here, it's a very, very overpowered weapon. It does pretty much as much damage as one whip, or one chain whip. And the fact that I'm going to have a triple over here, allow me to throw three crosses, can pretty much break the game. So right now I only have a double, so I'm going to work my way to get a triple. So in the first level here, we're not in the castle just yet, we're in some abandoned horse stable. Um, as you can see right here, there's some floating horse heads over here. <laughs> and also the first boss we fight is a... Skeleton Knight on a Skeleton Horse as well. But one of the things you're also going to be seeing me do is the damage boosting. Um, for example, with these Medusa heads here, I'm going to stun lock them in place with my whip and then boost myself on purpose. And it costs them my health. So it's all about counting how much health you have and memorizing how much damage each enemy gives out. See another damage boost right there. We're gonna get on some health here and let's start the boss fight right here. And that's gonna be it for stage one. Then we go ahead and collect the orb and move on to stage two. No, this is a uh, Super Nintendo. This uh, game came out two years before Rondo Blood did. Now on to stage 2, the forest level. Um, there really isn't much to say other than the fact that there are a multitude of different enemies in this game, in this level. Casually, it's a fun level. Speedrun wise, it's kind of a boring one, uh, in my honest opinion. Because you're mainly just walking forward the entire time. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill these uh, lizards or charmanders. As I called him. I'm gonna gather up as much hearts as I can because there is no orb in this level. So you can gather up as many hearts as you want. And the reason why I waste my hearts before I fight a boss is because it allows me to transition to the next screen a lot quicker. Just like in uh, Castlevania 1 and 3. Again, just keep marching forward. Receive some more damage boost here. And, uh, yeah, just keep going. So, up next is the boss of stage 2 the Medusa. It's a, it's a very, very, very short boss, as long as you have your crosses with you. 
And uh, as I said earlier, there is no orb to collect in this stage. So you're welcome to gather up as many hearts as you want. And she's dead. So over here, just keep marching forward and uh, receive some more intentional damage boost. This is when the damage boosting really does shine in this game. So I'm going to get out the potion over here and just walk my way forward while also uh, getting some health over here. Yeah, as long as you have your cross, the boss fights in this game are kind of a joke. Well, not all of them, but some of them, it's, it's 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 just silly whenever you kill a boss in like less than two seconds. I think we all agree on that. So some more damage boost here from these scythers here, and we can move on to stage three. This is a great game, Cyrus. I agree. So welcome to stage 3, um, this stage is actually divided by 3 different sub-levels, a cave, a waterfall, and an abandoned sunken city that resembles ancient Greece. So the biggest thing to worry about this stage here are the mudmen, because wherever the mudmen like to spawn at is completely different. Up next is going to be two here. I want them to go to the left. Okay, they walk to the right. See, I see it's not a good thing. You're going to receive some damage. But it's all good. As long as we didn't get hit by the first one, it's all good. Now comes the last Mudman, which I want him to walk to the right, but it's a very, very rare chance. Okay. <laughs> you walk to the right, but I... Kind of got hit by him in the last second. Alright, so welcome to part 2 of stage 3, the waterfall level. So there's not much to say here, uh, it's basically just uh, some... Just some platform over here. Just jump around. Do a little ring glitch there. And uh, just keep going forward. So what I did over there is I manipulate my whip to uh, launch myself upwards. It saves you around 10 seconds, but it's also very scary and risky if you mess it up. All right, so now on to part three, the sunken city part. So the fishmen do make a return in the previous CV games. Be careful not to get hit by these boxes. Their hit boxes are ridiculously huge. I'm going to use that eyeball to my advantage to boost myself forward. And just going to keep going forward. This part can be a little bit tricky because these enemies here can definitely screw things up, especially the fishmen, but we don't have to worry about them anymore. Alright, now comes the last screen of stage 3. I'm gonna jump here, I'm gonna damage boost myself forward. Well, to the left. <laughs> but that luckily that despawned the second bone dragon, which is very, very important. Because otherwise you're gonna be wasting a lot of time. And now comes the boss of stage 3, the Hydra. I got a lot of hearts here, I'm gonna waste some of these ones, I don't need them. I'm gonna need around 6, yeah. That was a pretty okay fight. So what I did over there is I paid attention to the water down below as a visual cue to time my, my uh, jumping and my cross throwing. In order to uh, kill the Hydra fight as quickly as I can. So now comes stage 4, uh, we're not in the castle just yet, right now we're in some magical tower run by Dracula's uh, head wizard. The castle will come very soon. 
But yeah, stage 4 is what we call mode 7 stage. Um, you'll see pretty much why. Uh, and I'll kind of give a little bit of explanation about this game and a little bit of stage very soon. Right now we're about to fight the, the miniature boss of stage 4. We are about to fight Poexel, and of course I'm not talking about the amazing RPG runner we all know and love. And he's dead. We're kind of low on health, which is kind of a little bit scary, but we'll maintain. Okay, so here comes the first part of Mode 7 here, where the screen will now uh, basically turn around. And I'm also doing a bit of a, a ring glitch over here to get myself to the platform a little bit quicker. Yeah, the Poexel. Uh, that was just a miniature boss though. The main boss will appear very soon. Alright, so here comes uh, what we call the break room. Just sit around, chill, get some coffee, watch some anime, uh, do whatever you want to do for the next few seconds. While also not uh, getting killed by Medusas. Alright, break's over. On to the next screen. So, I hope none of you get sick in the next stage, in the next uh, screen here. Um, because, like I said, this is what we call Mode 7 stage. So, Super Castlevania 4 is a launch title for the people over in Europe. So, it's clear that developers wanted to uh, showcase how powerful uh, Mode 7 is and all that stuff. Alright, here it goes. I won't lie, when I first played this game as a kid, this screen did make me a little bit sick. So what's unique about this stage is that if you just keep marching forward without stopping, you're easily going to get the same exact patterns from these skeletons that drop from the ceiling. They only drop depending on how the screen moves. Alright, now we can uh, no longer worry about the screen anymore. So uh, what I try to do over there is what we call the zip. It's a very, very, very famous trick. Um, so what the zip does is it allows you to basically clip to the wall and uh, basically zip your way through the entire screen. But it's also very, very scary because if you mess it up, you pretty much die. And uh, of course we don't want that because we want to keep our cross. Now comes uh, Coronaut, the boss of stage 4, or Graveler as I call him. That was kind of a very slow fight, but I'll take it. I mean, that's exactly how it works, Black Moon. I mean, you gotta walk in style. I'm gonna go kill Dracula. Alright, now on to stage 5. This is a very, very short stage. There's not much to worry about besides the timer and the harpies that appear randomly. Like that one over there. So right now we're marching over to the castle, finally. The first four stages were just the outer skirts of Dracula's castle, now we're actually going to be approaching the real castle itself. So again, I'm kind of like on the lookout these harpies here, because they do appear randomly. Look at the rosary here. And we don't have to worry about the harpies anymore. So there's no orb to collect in this game, just like in stage two sorry, in this level, just like in stage two. So we can gather up as many hearts as we want. 
for the upcoming stage. Alright, now on to stage 6. So, welcome to stage uh, 6, Dracula's Ball, where he throws all his wild parties at. So if you play Castlevania 1, this place should look a little bit familiar. Also, I am playing the Japanese version, so in case you didn't notice, those statues from earlier are, uh, nude. Which is also censored in the United States version. Alright, now comes these chandelier parts. This part can be a little bit tricky, so... You have to be a little bit quiet here. Ooh. <laughs> so what I try to do over there is I try to basically land onto the next uh, chandelier as quickly as I can by listening to the game's music. I use an audio cue where when a certain part of the music plays, that's my cue to jump over to the next platform, but I kind of mistimed my jumping there. But it's all good, you only lose about 8 seconds. However, if you fall down, you lose about a minute and 30 seconds. So I'd rather uh, lose 8 seconds than that. So like I said, this is Dracula's ball here, and these are his, uh, his former guests that we just killed right there. So I'm going to use my crosses here to kill these ectoplasms. You can also kill these uh, guys over here. Alright, on to the next screen here. So not much to say about this part here, just basically jump and uh, try not to fall down through the stairs. So for those who haven't played this game, there is a weird glitch in this game where you can't actually fall through stairs. Uh, Castlevania 4 is the first game to implement the mechanics of landing on stairs. And this game, like that mechanic just wasn't programmed as well. There is a chance you can't fall down if Simon's foot lands on a certain pixel. It's a thing we kind of joke around called Stair Boss, where you will fall down. It's kind of like Kago from Super Metroid, where you can't fall down or clip through uh, certain parts of the game. Now to the last, uh, second to last screen of stage 6. So for this part of here, you're going to want to worry about these ghosts here. Their appearance is very RNG. That's a very bad spawn there. And I'm going to waste some of these hearts here. I don't really need this money. Oops. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't land there. Now comes the boss of stage 6, and they're dead. You can kind of see why the cross is super OP in this game. Up next is stage 7, the library stage, which is probably my favorite stage in the entire game. So, welcome to stage 6, the library or armory stage. Kind of a little bit messed up there from the beginning, but it's all good. So this stage is separated to two different segments, a library and a 
armory section. We're still in the library right now. As you can see, there's some floating books here. I tried to do something called the book jump, which allows you to basically land to the next platform. It saves you around 3.5 seconds, but it's a 7 frame window right there, and I didn't take the opportunity to do that. Alright, so now we're done with the library section. We're now into the armory uh, part of the game, or level. And I'm not really sure who that is in the painting over there. This uh, worm you see here only appears in this section of the game, and you will never see it ever again. I'm not sure why it only appears in the bottom floor. Uh, watch out for this rug monster here, just crouch, and uh, just don't get hit by the spikes. The spikes in this game, by the way, uh, will instantly kill you, and you will see a lot of them in the next stage. Alright, now on to the boss of stage 7, which is very, very, very RNG. So, I'm gonna be a little scared here. Alright, we're good. I was running low on health there, but we're fine here. So, now on to stage 8, which is the most infamous stage in the entire game. Um. Because of the fact that now the game will now ramp up in difficulty, enemies will now take more damage and give more damage as well. Also, there's spikes everywhere. <laughs> and like I said, spikes will instantly kill you. So yeah, this is the uh, so this is the Japanese version of the game I'm playing. In the United States version, they kind of changed it up to make the blood um, have like a greenish looking palette. To make it look like it's sludge, but in the J version, it's a, uh, it's all blood. So much blood. Also, the statues in Stage Six uh, were also nude as well. <laughs> they censored it in the United States version. Hey, Maximum, thank you very much. Appreciate it a lot. So I'm going to pick up this rosary here to despawn the second uh, bone statue. And I'm also going to pick up some meat here. Because we're going to be doing some more damage boosting very, very soon. Such as uh, this one over here. Yeah, the United States version, this level would be all, would have basically green blood. But in the real version, the Japanese version I'm playing, it's a uh, red blood. Alright, so on to the last screen of stage 8. This part can be very, very, very scary. Alright, there you go. I'm not going to go for the yellow bridge here. This bridge is very, very RNG. Although that was a good pattern there. So maybe I should have went for it. Now we're going to fight Frankenstein's monster, which is the main boss of the stage, and he's dead. And now we're on our way to stage 9, the treasury stage. Which you will see just how rich Dracula really is. So welcome to stage 9, the treasury stage. Where you can see just how rich and powerful Drac is. Where now the skeletons in this level are now made of gold, which is kind of a nice touch by the developers, in my honest opinion. It also has some disappearing platforms, which will make the game lag a lot, which you will see very soon right here.
Just basically uh, jump right the moment you land. Just don't keep walking, otherwise it will uh, make the game lag a lot. The time I crossroads here. And just keep going. Just gonna march forward here and then uh, pick up some meat here. So yeah, in this game, uh, meat can also be in candles. It doesn't have to be in walls. Just like in the previous CV games. Alright, we're now going to approach the second last screen of the stage. So in this section of the stage here, um, all these candles here drop nothing but money bags. Which uh, is kind of a bit useless when you're running this game. Money basically gives you more points, and then if you have a certain amount of points, you can have more lives. But since I haven't really died yet, there's really no point. Now to the last screen of stage 9, we're going to fight um, Zapbat, the main boss fight. So with Zapbat here, you want to whip it 22 times for it to split to 3 different little bats. However, its movement is completely different. Alright, that was an okay fight. And that's going to be it for stage 9, on to the second to last stage, stage A, the clock tower stage. Again, it cannot be a castle of any game without a clock tower level. Alright, so welcome to stage A, the clock tower stage. It's a very, very rough stage. But the best thing about it is that it has one of the best soundtracks ever, Bloody Tears. From Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. So yeah, this is a very, very tricky stage. Um, in terms of the platforming and some of the RNG enemies that will move around as they please. Also, the gears here are very, very tricky. It can be a bit tough to understand where their landing box is at. But it's still doable. So there's the good old Medusa boost here from stage 1. Now to the second to last screen in, sta in this stage. And there you go. So that part over there is a bit tricky. What I did is I basically got hit on purpose uh, and used my eye for my advantage to latch onto the ring. And now I'm going to latch onto this other ring. Alright, we should be good. Now we're going to fight the boss of the stage. So this, for the mummy boss here, I want it to spawn to the left, but yeah, it gave me a bad pattern, so as far as we know, there is no way for us to manipulate its spawn. Preferably, I want it to spawn all the way to the left so I can kill it in one cycle. Yeah, it gave me another middle spawn. And it gave me bandages, which is also not a good thing. Alright, so this boss is going to be a little bit slow. Now it's on the right side, which is an okay spawn. 
Just gonna waste some of these hearts here. Don't need them. And now we're on our way to the final stage of Super Castlevania 4. And here we are. So welcome to stage B, which uh, has a remix cover of Vampire Hunter, or sorry, Vampire Killer from Castlevania 1. And it's also going to be featuring a remix of uh, of the beginning from Castlevania 3. So for this part over here, I'm actually going to be whipping these bats on purpose to reduce lag. But I'm also going to gather up as many hearts as I can since this is the final stage. And you're going to be needing it for the boss rush as well as the Dracula fight. Alright, so this part here can be a little bit scary because, um, as I said earlier, you can fall through stairs. It's uh, possible. It's a little bit of a silly glitch in this game. So I'm going to try my best not to fall through any stairs here. This is the section that we call Stair Boss because you can die just by simply falling down. So be careful from these platforms here, they do have spikes. And like I said earlier, spikes will instantly kill you. Alright, so we should be getting close here to the boss rush. So up next we're going to be fighting Slagra from... A lot of you may recognize from Castlevania Symphony of Night. Um, Slagra is pretty easy and sudden, but he's a kind of a nightmare in this game. He's pretty much the unofficial final boss. Hey, what's up Mr. Energy? Alright, so this part here, I'm going to time my crossroads. So one, two, three. There you go, so we've got us a little bit critical there. Alright, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little bit scared there. Slagra is a nightmare in this game. His movements are completely different every time. Also, when he pecks at you, his hitbox is ridiculously huge. But what I did over there earlier is I tried to use my crosses to overlay on him and do a bit of a critical damage. Now comes Gaibon, who again appears in Sone as well. He's still easy. Just like that. <laughs> Gaimon's still pretty easy in this game. Just like he's in Symphony of Night. It's kind of what Slogger was as well. Alright, on to the last boss of the boss rush. Um, Death. Then up next is going to be Dracula. A little bit of a slow fight there, but I'll take it. And now we're gonna fight Dracula himself. So the biggest thing to worry about Drac is that his spawns are all different. It's all random. So you gotta hope for the, the best spawns in order to use your crosses to um, give him like a good old crit. So I'm gonna get out some hearts here. I say 24 is good enough. So in this part here, I count down 7 seconds from the in-game timer um, in order to start the fight. So 2, 1, now. Uh, that's kind of a bad spawn there. Same there. <laughs> Corner spawns are the worst. But like I said, Drac spawns wherever he feels like it's.
Alright, on to the second phase of the Dracula fight. So unlike the previous games, he does not turn into the Cookie Monster, sadly. Instead, he's uh, bald and angrier. And he throws lightnings at you. And we're done. And that's gonna be it for Super Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo. Time's gonna end the moment I grab the orb here. Yeah, there's Dracula right over here. And time. 3523, that's a uh, a very good time for a marathon. Thank you for the GG's everybody, appreciate it a lot. And thank you again uh, RGL TV for allowing me to be here to showcase uh, two of my favorite Castlevania games ever. And like I said, uh, the game ends with the uh, castle crumbling and Simon just staring into it. While also playing cutscenes of the earlier stages. Yeah, thank you again, everyone, uh, for being here, and thank you again, RGL TV, for allowing me to be here. Simon works in strange ways. I don't know how he does it, Black Moon. Alright, so stick around. We have uh, Castlevania The Adventure Rebirth with Kong Cakes, so stick around for that. Adventure Rebirth is a very good game.